Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to lecture 11 in our lectures about grammatical rules and systems. In this lecture, we'll talk about coordination. In the previous lectures, and uh, particularly in the previous lecture, which, is, which was lecture 10, we discussed the five basic types of clause structure. And we said that these five types of, of clause structures uh, can be added to, can be modified, can be changed. We either can add adjuncts, we either can add modifiers uh, to make them more elaborate and to expand them. Another way to change these basic uh, types of clause structure is that we can duplicate each part. So each part of the structure of a clause, which is, uh, if you look back at the five basic types, th these are the structures of the clause. So these the five types we discussed are the five uh, basic types of the structure of a clause. So each part of the structure of a clause can be duplicated. That means that we can double uh, and uh, make it more, and we can add two things, we can add three things uh, for each part uh, by using coordination. So for example, the subject, we can have more than one subject, and uh, we can either have two, three, and so on. Uh, we can duplicate it in the following sentence, for example, Muhammad and I are good friends. Here we have Muhammad and we have I. Both of them are the subject here. So Muhammad and I usually we'll say Muhammad uh, is a good friend, okay, uh, or I am a good friend of Muhammad's. But here we have Muhammad and I. Here we used and to duplicate the subject. So the two parts of the subject, here we have a subject with two parts, are joined, they are connected using a conjunction. So the conjunction in this sentence is and. And is called a conjunction, and it joins the two parts of the subject in this sentence. Uh, so what are conjunctions? Conjunctions are words like and, or, and, but, which we use to connect which we use to join grammatical units or grammatical elements in a sentence. Like we saw previously, Muhammad is a noun, I is a pronoun. These are grammatical units, grammatical elements that we used conjunctions to join. So we used conjunctions to use these, uh, to join these two grammatical elements. If we combine more than two parts, we usually separate the parts by commas. So in the previous sentence, we, we had only two parts. But if we have more than two parts, if we have three parts, for example, we use commas to separate the different parts and only conjunctions to separate the last two parts. Okay, so conjunctions are only used to separate the last two parts. So look at this example. Muhammad, Ahmed, and I are good friends. Here, the subject has three parts. Muhammad, a noun, Ahmed, another noun, and then I, which is a pronoun. So Muhammad and Ahmed are separated by a comma. You notice there is a comma between them. And Ahmed and I are separated by and, by the conjunction and. So if we have more than two parts, we need commas between them. And the last two parts are joined by a conjunction. In this case, in this example, the conjunction is and. Now we will look at types of conjunctions. So we have several types. The first one is coordinating conjunctions, or uh, we can call them coordinators. These are single word, so they are only one word conjunctions. They include and, but, and for. So conjunctions that have only one word. They, they consist, they are composed of only one word. For example, I want Ahmed and Saleh to come see me. Here we have Ahmed, we have Saleh, two MPs, they are joined together by the conjunction and. Another example, I want Ahmed or Saleh to come see me. Ahmed, Saleh, and then the conjunction or to combine the two. I want Ahmed but not Saleh to, jo to see me. Okay, so Ahmed, an MP, Saleh and MP, and then we have but, which is a conjunction that joins the two. Of course, each conjunction, conjunction here has its own meaning. 
So in the first example, I want Ahmed and Saleh, that means I want them both. I want them both to come see me. The second example, I want Ahmed or Saleh, I only want one of them to come see me. So either Ahmed or Saleh, not both of them, only one of them is enough to come and see me. And then the third one, I want Ahmed but not Saleh to come see me. So, but here excludes Saleh. I want only to see Ahmed. So, but excludes Saleh from the uh, verb that, which is see, to come and see. So, I only want Ahmed to come see me. I don't want Saleh to come see me. You notice we use not with but here because but usually means something contradictory or the opposite of, of what is before. So, I want him, but I don't want the other person. Okay, I want Ahmed, but I don't want Saleh to come see me. The other type of conjunctions is called correlative coordinating conjunctions. These are pairs of words. We said coordinating conjunctions are only single word conjunctions. Here we have pairs of words. They include both and, either or, neither nor, not only, but also. So th those are called correlative coordinating conjunctions. And we'll see some examples of the use here. First example here that we have. I want both Ahmed and Saleh to come see me. Here we have the correlative coordinating conjunction both and. So we have the MP Ahmed, we have the MP Saleh, and we have both and which is a correlative coordinating conjunction. The second example, I want either Ahmed or Saleh to come see me. Either or is a correlative coordinating conjunction and it joins the MP Ahmed with the MP Saleh. I want neither Ahmed nor Saleh to come see me. This is also a correlative coordinating conjunction. I want not only Ahmed but also Saleh to come see me. Each of these Correlative coordination, co coordinating conjunctions has its own meaning. So in the first one, both here, both and, that means I want them both. So this is like more emphasis. We can say, I want Ahmed and Saleh to come see me, but when we add both, we add emphasis. That means I want them both. So we are emphasizing that the person wants them both to come see him. Uh, in the next example, I want either Ahmed or Saleh. We can say, I want Ahmed or Saleh to come see me. But when we add either, this is the addition of more emphasis. So we, em we are emphasizing that we only want one. Either this person or that person. Not both. Either this or that person. The third example, I want neither Ahmed nor Saleh. Here, I don't want any of, of these two persons. Okay, I don't want them to come see me. So neither this person nor this person. So here it is used to give something similar to a negative. Okay, I don't want to see them. I don't want to see Ahmed. I don't want to see Saleh. I don't want to see them both. Okay, so I don't want to see these two persons. I want not only Ahmed, but also Saleh to come see me. This also means that I want to see them both, but it also gives more emphasis, okay, that I don't only want Ahmed. No, I want them both. Okay, I want them both to come see me. We also have other types of conjunctions like subordinating conjunctions which we call subordinators and correlative subordinating conjunctions. Uh, these we will talk about when we discuss subordination in lecture 12 and 13 which will come after this one inshallah. Now we have this small exercise. Choose a type of conjunction in the sentences below. A coordinating conjunction or B correlative coordinating conjunction. So you either choose A or choose B depending on the sentence that you have. In number one my brother and sister went to Damma. What is the conjunction here? We have and. This is the conjunction. And it is a single word conjunction. We call it coordinating. We call it a coordinating conjunction. So the correct choice is A. Number one A. My brother and sister. Number two, they are both polite and friendly. What is the conjunction here? We have both and. Okay, both and. These are pairs of words, as we said, we call them correlative 
coordinating conjunctions. So, in this case, the correct choice will be B. So, number two is B. Number three, I not only like swimming, but also diving. Where is the conjunction here? Not only and but also. Okay, so these are pairs of words, and we call them correlative, coordinating conjunctions. So, the correct choice for number three is B. Number four, I like swimming, but not diving. Here we have only one word or single word conjunction which is but and the correct choice in this case is A number four the answer is A we can compound or coordinate any level of consti constituents which are grammatical units so constituents are grammatical units like words phrases and clauses so we can use words to refer to words phrases to refer to phrases clauses to refer to clauses but we can use constituents to refer to all of those, okay? So all of these three grammatical units, we can use just constituents to refer to them as an easy way to talk about them. So words are constituents, phrases are constituents, and clauses are also called constituents. So now we will look at each level of constituents, starting with words, and we will see how we can coordinate or compound at each, at each of these levels. First of all, coordinating uh, words, or the, the coordination of words. Coordination can link two or more words of the same word class. Okay, so if they have the, the other, uh, of the same word class, we can link them, we can coordinate them, as in the following examples. So the first one will be about nouns. So we have here two nouns, football, and we have basketball. And we are coordinating uh, these two using and, which is a coordinating conjunction. So, football and basketball are my favorite sports. We can also coordinate adjectives. So, my friend Khalid is funny and intelligent. Funny is an adjective, intelligent is an adjective, and we have a conjunction between the two, so funny and intelligent. We can also coordinate adverbs. We must finish our work both quickly and efficiently. Both and, as we said, is a correlative, a coordinating conjunction and then we have quickly and efficiently these are adverbs so we are coordinating these two we are joining these two using the correlative coordinating conjunction both and we can also coordinate at the level of phrases okay so here we'll look at the coordination at the level of phrases so we can have two or more phrases of the same type and we can coordinate them and link them together using Co conjunctions, uh, for example, noun phrases. We discussed noun phrases before, if you remember, like the old man and the young boy. These are noun phrases. They have a head which is man, and a head in the other phrase which is boy. And then we have modifiers. So we have the old. These are modifiers, pre-modifiers that come before the head, and the young. These are pre-modifiers that come before the head boy. So here we have two noun, noun phrases, and we can join them together using a conjunction. So in this case, we have the conjunction and. So the old boy and the young, uh, or the old man and the young boy crossed the street. Okay. Uh, next we have verb phrases, so we can coordinate verb phrases, uh, as in this example. Many of the grammatical terms must be studied and will come in the exam. So must be studied is a complex verbal group. If you remember, we discussed complex verbal groups. Here we have must be, which is the model plus the infinitive, and the verb to be with the past participle, uh, which is, as we said, type 4, uh, which is in, in the passive voice. So must be studied. Here we have a complex verbal group. And then we also have will come, which is the model plus the infinitive, which is type 1 of the complex verbal groups we discussed. So here we have two complex verbal groups and we link them together with the conjunction AND. So we can link two verb phrases or verbal groups together using the conjunction AND or other conjunctions as well. We also can coordinate adjective phrases. As in this example, the topics are very interesting and really useful. So, very interesting and really useful 
Interesting is an adjective. Useful is an adjective. And the adjective is modified by an adverb. In the first phrase, or in the first adjective phrase, we have very, which, which is an adverb. It modifies the adjective interesting. Very interesting is an adjective phrase. We also have really, which is an adverb that modifies the adjective useful. Really useful is an adjective phrase. We join these two adjective phrases using the conjunction and. We can also uh, co coordinate two adverbials or adverbial phrases. For example, we can say, you can wash your clothes by hand or in the washing machine. By hand is an adverbial. Here we have a preposition, by, and then an MP, hand. And we also have another preposition, in, and an MP, the washing machine. These are prepositional phrases. And they, we, they can, we can call them adverbials, as we said when we discussed uh, prepositional phrases. So here we are coordinating two adverbials using the conjunction or. So by hand is an adverbial, in the washing machine is an adverbial, and or can coordinate the two. Now we'll talk about compound sentences. If you remember, we discussed in the, in the first lecture, we said that we have types of sentences. We have simple, we have compound, and we have complex sentences. So here we will discuss compound sentences, which are basically clauses that we coordinate using conjunctions. So, here is the definition you have here. A compound sentence has two or more clauses which are linked by a coordinator, which is an, one of the conjunctions that we discussed uh, in, in, uh, previously. So, all of the clauses in compound sentences are coordinate. So, if we have two clauses, if we have three clauses, they are all coordinate. In other words, they are of equal rank. So, none of them is subordinate under another clause. None of them is dependent on another clause. So it is not part, none of the clauses is part of another clause. They are all independent. The difference between dependent and independent is that independent clauses can come alone as a complete sentence. But dependent clauses cannot come alone as a complete sentence. They need to be added to a main clause. So dependent clauses need to be part of another clause. They need another clause to come as uh, in a sentence. But independent clauses can appear alone in a complete and grammatical sentence. So, when we have compound sentences, each clause in the compound sentence is independent. None of them is dependent. Uh, the following are examples of compound sentences. And you, you can correct uh, something here. So none of them is dependent. Okay, so none of them is uh, dependent on part of an or, 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 or part of another clause. Uh, we'll look at several examples here. The first example, example one: Everyone was in the room, and the doors had been closed. Everyone was in the room. This is the first clause. The doors had been closed. This is the second clause. We have the conjunction the coordinate conjunction and it joins the two clauses we can say everyone was in the room and we end the sentence this is a full sentence we can also say the doors had been closed this is also a, a, a full sentence and a complete sentence uh, on its own and we can of course combine the two in a compound sentence using a coordinator or using a conjunction and here so here we have an example of a compound sentence uh, we have another example here. Everyone was in the room. The doors had been closed, and latecomers had to wait outside. You notice we have a comma here, and then we have a conjunction also. The, the, here we have three clauses. Okay, so the first clause, everyone was in the room. This is the first clause. So clause number one. Then we have the doors had been closed. This, this is the second clause. Clause number two. And latecomers had to wait. Latecomers had to wait. This is the third clause. So it is clause number three in this sentence. So this sentence has three clauses. You notice that we separate the first two clauses with a comma. And then the last two clauses, the second and third clause, are separated with a conjunction, as we said. 
Only the last two parts are separated with the conjunction. The previous parts are separated with commas. The third example here, we have some students didn't do the homework and the teacher knew, but he didn't say anything. Here we have three clauses. So some students didn't do the homework. This is the first clause. The teacher knew. This is the second clause. He didn't say anything. This is the third clause. But we didn't use commas to separate the second and or the first and third uh, uh, the first and second clause aren't separated with commas they are separated with co the conjunction and because the conjunction is different here okay so if we have different conjunctions we do not use commas we use the conjunction for example and and then we use but to separate the second and third third clauses okay so some students didn't do the homework the teacher knew here these two clauses are separated or joined with and and then we have the teacher knew he didn't say anything these are joined with but okay so compare to uh, example two and compare example three and notice the difference here we have two different conjunctions so we didn't use commas in number three in number two we have the same conjunction so we used commas in example four either he didn't bring the book or someone took it from him. Either or is a correlative coordinating conjunction and here it is used to coordinate two clauses. The first clause is he didn't bring the book. The second clause is someone took it from him. So here we have two clauses that are joined by a correlative coordinating conjunction. In example 5, I'm selling my car and I'm buying a new one. Here we also have two clauses that are joined by a conjunction. In this case, the conjunction is AND. Also in example 6, Muhammad is going on a trip for a few days, but he will be back before Saturday. Here we also have two clauses separated by a conjunction. In example 7, he may have received the letter, but he may have forgotten to reply. Again, two clauses and they are separated by the conjunction. But you will notice that the subject and the verb, the, or the verbal group in the second clause is between brackets. It, it is between parentheses. In this case, we can remove, we can delete the subject and the verb if they are repeated in, in the first clause. And if they refer to the same person or thing. So, in example 5, 6, and 7, when the subjects of the two clauses refer to the same person, we are talking about the same person, or if we are talking about the same thing, we can delete the second subject or we can keep it. It depends on the speaker. So you can keep it or you can delete it. We can also delete the second verbal group if it is the same as the first verbal group. Uh, let's look back at example five. I'm selling my car and I am, I'm buying a new one. So I'm in the second clause is between brackets because we can remove it, we can delete it. We can say, I'm selling my car and buying a new one. We can remove it because I refers to the same person as a subject in the first clause. And we also have am, the verb to be here, is repeated in the second clause as in the, uh, and it is previously mentioned in the first clause. So we can remove it uh, if we want to. In, the, in example six, we can say Muhammad is going on a trip for a few days but will be back before Saturday. Here we can remove the subject he because it refers to the same person as Muhammad. So Muhammad and he refer to the same person so we can remove the pronoun he if we want. You notice that we kept the verb is going and will be because these are not repeated in the two clauses. So we keep the verbs if they are not repeated. In example 7, he may have received the letter, but he may have forgotten to reply. Here we can remove the subject in the second clause, he, and we can also remove the verbal group, may have, because they are both repeated in the first clause. Okay, and he refers to the same person as the subject in the first clause. Let's look at this exercise. Decide whether the following sentences are A, simple sentences, or B, compound sentences. Number one, my neighbor and his family are going on a trip. We can take the subject, the whole subject, and say they. So they are going 
on a trip. Here we have only one subject and only one verb. And in this case, uh, this is a simple sentence. Okay, so only one verbal group and only one subject. So it is a simple sentence. Number two, my neighbor is going on a trip, but his family are not going with him. Here you notice we have my neighbor is going on a trip. This is one clause and his family are not going with him. This is another clause. We have two subjects. My neighbor is the subject of the fir first clause and his family is the subject of the second clause. So here we have two clauses. They are joined together by the coordinator, but, okay, or we call it the conjunction. The conjunction, the coordinating conjunction, but. So in this case, this sentence is a compound sentence. So number two, the correct choice is B. In number three, either I lost my wallet or someone stole it. Here we have, I lost my wallet. We have a subject, we have a verb. This is a, a clause. So I lost my wallet is a clause. And also we have someone stole it. Someone is the subject and stole is a verb here. So someone stole it. Here we have two clauses. They are joined together with the correlative coordinating conjunction either or. In number four, so in, the, in this uh, case, of course, it is a compound, compound sentence. So the correct choice for number three is B. And in number four, we have the wallet was either lost or stolen, either or. This is a correlative coordinating conjunction. And we are coordinating lost and stolen. So in this case, we only have one clause. So the wallet was stolen, okay, was either stolen or lost. So in this case, we don't have a compound sentence. We have only one clause, and it is a simple sentence in this case. Okay, so number four, the correct choice is A. Let's look at another exercise here. We decide whether the subject in the second clause is A, optional, can be de deleted, or obligatory, it means that it cannot be deleted. Okay, so optional or obligatory. Of course, we said it is optional if it is repeated, if it refers to the same person as the one in the first clause, and it is obligatory, it cannot be deleted if it refers to different persons, if it is not repeated in the second clause. Number one, my neighbor is going on a trip. This is the first clause. His family are going with him too. This is the second clause. They are joined by and. So my neighbor, the subject of the first, first clause, his family is the subject of the second clause, and they are different here. So we cannot delete or remove the subject of the second clause. So it is obligatory. His family cannot be deleted. Okay, we need to keep it. So his family is obligatory. The correct choice for number one is B. Number two, my neighbor is going on a trip and he will take his family with him. My neighbor is going on a trip. This is the first clause. He will take his family with him. This is the second clause. You notice the subject in the second clause is he. It refers to the same person as the uh, subject in the first clause, which is my neighbor in this case. So we can remove he. We can say my neighbor is going on a trip and will take his family with him. So he can be removed. So in this case, the subject in the second clause is optional. It is not obligatory. And the choice, the correct choice for number two is A. Number three, Sarah will study hard for the exam and she will try to get high grades. Sarah will study hard for the exam is the first clause. She will try to get high grades is the second clause. They are joined by the coordinator or the co coordinating conjunction and. And in this case, she refers to the same person as the subject in the first clause. So she, it refers to Sarah. Okay, it's the same person. We're talking about the same person. And we also have the, the helping verb will. So will is also repeated. So we can remove them both. Sarah will study hard for the exam and try to get high grades. We can remove she and we can also remove will because they are repeated in the second clause. In number four, Sarah will study hard for the exam and Maha will do the same. Sarah will study hard for the exam. This is the first clause. Maha will do the same. This is the second clause. The subject in the first clause is Sarah. Maha is the subject of the second clause. 
they are different, they don't refer to the same person, so we need to keep the subject in the second clause. So in this case, the question for the, the answer for number four is B, obligatory. Okay, so number three, she can, re can remo be removed, so the answer is A. Number three, the correct choice is A. And number four, the correct choice is B. Okay, so this is the end of our lecture today. Inshallah, we will continue our discussion of clauses uh, when we talk about complex clauses and the case of subordination in lecture, the, the coming lectures, Inshallah. So I will see you then.